All right, I'm gonna offer this Summer Camp TS2000DX for sale. We can see some of the flaws that it has here. It's missing one of the one of these guys here on the on the outside. I call these like the ring adjustment, how these have these dual controls. We all know these radios, 2950s and whatnot. This is like an original 2950. Um, yeah, I think the backup battery is dead. The memory battery is probably dead in it because you can't get the um, you can't get the um, the channel display to come on on this. So you will only have VFO. So never really bothers me. I use these radios like a you know ham radio. This is VFO. If you want to shift, you can go wherever. You know this actually works pretty good. It's not all sloppy and skippy. So. You know, it's, the radio's in pretty good shape. Um, it does have a Velcro on the top. It does have a Velcro on the bottom. So probably somebody had this in their vehicle maybe or something. I don't know. Uh, looking at the cases, obviously they got some bracket rash on the sides. Um, they didn't used to give out those little plastic, or not plastic, but the rubberized things that you stick to your bracket like they do now so you know it's not too bad on this side we'll look at the back of it nice clean back it's not all dirty and beat up looking so it does work it's Taiwan radio so um, there's no limiters clip or anything from what I can tell when I got this their transistor was out of it so I put it back in um, I didn't align it or anything, so it does when it first comes on. It's this clarifier is unlocked, by the way, too. So when we transmit here, we look at the counter. It slowly comes back, but uh, it does take a while. So obviously, we want two hundred five zero zero or as close as we can get. So you know we're a little off to the left there. So, but you can compensate for that based on you know the clarifiers being unlocked it'll go full down almost a full kilohertz full right over a kilohertz so it'll go quite a ways it's uh it's getting better because when i first fired it up it was like 500 hertz high so, you know, it's one of those things with these radios. They are very much uh, old-fashioned for what they are now. I mean, I could align it and probably get it a little bit closer. But uh, I'm going to sell this, I think, for a pretty decent price. So if somebody wants me to do that, I'll do that. It's never going to be perfect. These are not perfectly designed radios. Any of these chassis Ranger radios, even if the new ones, they're not going to be perfect and always stay on frequency. So as soon as we realize that and we just accept it for what it is and, and, and try to enjoy the radio for what it offers, which is usually really good AM, um, sideband on these is going to be minimal to average versus what's on the market now. So I wouldn't buy this primarily to use as sideband. I would kind of have in your mind a customer that would look for this probably just to use on AM. And these are not high power radios, these are old school radios, so you know, keep that in mind also. Um, you're not gonna get a ton of power out of this, so this is how it's set right now. RF powered all the way up about six, all the way down about 1.7. So with the Roger beep, it just swung up to like seven average, five average. So uh, let's talk into the mic now. One, two, three, one, two, three, check, 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 hello. Okay, let's put this in peak. Oops, so just shut it off. There we go, we'll come back. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three, check, check, one, two, one, two, hello. So seems to have quite a bit of swing. <laughs> Uh, for what it is, I think a lot of the AM guys really like that swing like that, like I mentioned on my last video. But it does do a lot of swing. Um, I'll turn that up all the way. One, two, three, one, two, three. We don't really get that much more out of it, so um, it kind of is what it is there. I'll just show it on the uh, equipment. Alright, so we're on our low RF power setting here. Um, 
all I did is put the limiter in it. I didn't align it or anything. So it was full on in distortion when I got it. So obviously it could still use a little bit less on the mod, but you can compensate that with the mic gain. If I just lower the mic gain back some, then you get a nice clean waveform there. So that's going to be something that probably, you know, most wouldn't care about. Um, but there's our mic gain setting right there. Now this is the top side right here, but as we look at the scope here, and if I turn it all the way up, it starts to flatten off in the middle, like pinch out. So, uh, but you can see what happens when that pinches off. Here's the spectrum analyzer, 20 kilohertz right there. Peak power went up to like 8.7. When we adjust that down, you can see the how much of the excess is going away that quick. And that is a nice clean output there. Uh, actually, this needs to be in the fast setting for what we're doing because it's just going to lock on the, the tone. So there it is when it's in a little bit of distortion. And you can see now we're like eight something. Uh, we can do this so we can all kind of look together. It makes a big difference having it set right. And what do we lose? About a watt. So but we're not bleeding or staying within the frequency that we want to be on. So there's the low power. Let me show you guys the high power. All right, so on the high power, it's a little flat topped, which I kind of figured it would be. It's not really bad here, surprisingly, but watch what happens when I back that mod down just a little bit. Get that flat top out of there if we can. So it cleans it up pretty nice. And then it looks a little bit more respectable here. I don't think too many would run it with this high of a dead key, but it looks pretty nice there. So, um, and then it's doing like 20 something. When I Now the mic gain's down quite a bit on this. Um, right there. So if someone wants me to align it, I will. It's never going to be a perfect radio, but it's going to be a little bit better than this. So... Obviously, if we start cranking it up, and we get that flat top effect somewhat, and our power doesn't really go up that much, so that kind of is what it is. Okay, now she's on side band. This is lower side with the mic gain and the RF power all the way up. So it doesn't look too bad here. Um, you know, pretty good for a radio like this. Could be a little bit better, so probably if we lower our gain a little bit on the microphone, maybe. Yeah, it's maybe a touch better there, but. Export radio, so, you know, early edition. But these were pretty good. Nice and clean up here, two-tone, so looks pretty good. This is lower side. Not all, not really too bad. Uh, let's put a one kilohertz tone through this now and just see what happens with the frequency. So now we're starting to get a line better. Um, as we can see now with a 1K tone on lower side, we're only like 34 hertz, 35 hertz on the high. And see our clarifier is almost at dead center. So, so now it's just gonna be one small little move. So it does take a little bit to warm up this radio. Once it does, it's pretty close. Yeah, that's very minor change from the clarifier, but there, there's our frequency. So let me come back and show you guys upper. Here's upper side. So we're gonna look for like 206. So it's a little higher on the upper side. So we need to come down just a little bit more. And this is normal for these chassis. I mean, they, they've been like this since they were created. So it's not really that far off. You guys can see where it's at. It's very usable now for uh, what it is. And now our AM, put that back at 12. So AM probably still needs to get touched up a little bit. So we're at like 212 Hertz high. I mean, trust me, there's guys running radios, older radios that don't even know that they're like three, 400 hertz high or low. And it's really not a major concern for AM. 
Although I would prefer to always be on frequency, but, you know, somebody, if you have, like, if you're interested in this, and say you have, like, a IC7300 or one of those new Yesus, whatever one, they have a couple different ones. If you have a radio that's known to be on frequency and you have, like, a pan adapter you can look at, I'll show you guys what I mean here in a second. You could almost set this yourself. You can find the info online for this. This is a Gen 1 RCI 2950. I mean, it would be better to have like a, a good quality counter and 10 megahertz reference input to do it, but you can do it with the radio. They're pretty darn close, so there we go. So that's about as far as it is off. It's not horrible, um, but here's what we can do if we go to our... I see a lot of guys that show these on like YouTube and Facebook and stuff. I like to run it with the frequency being shown. So you can put this to like 2.5K and we can zoom in on it. And we can go reference, turn that up as much as we can. And then what you want to do is try to center it up. I have that centering line right there. So watch what happens when I move that clarifier. It's going to shift here. See how we shift it away? So you can legitimately like keep the radio keyed and put the clarifier at 12, have the back, or I'm sorry, the bottom cover off, go in there to that oscillator adjuster with something non-conductive and just quickly and be careful that you don't break the core in there because these older radios have a tendency they're brittle because um, they're quite old don't break that ceramic core i think it's ceramic and they can crack and then you can't adjust them uh, but you could easily do that if somebody has a radio like this or something or you have a buddy that has a radio like this it's going to be close enough you know like i can show you guys we're pretty much centered and this is where we're at so you could call that pretty much good to go and that's something you know if you want me to do it i'll do it i'll have to charge a little bit because it's just time to do it uh, i'm not really sure what i would charge that could be something we could talk about or whatever but uh, otherwise i mean this is going to be sold the way it is uh, let's check the receiver on it really quick i don't think i showed the power on sideband so let me do that really quick so here's the mic gain and RF power all the way up again so Here's our power, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's about a 25 watt radio, so that's what these were designed to do. And I always thought these were good radios for their day. I have an original 2950 that I kept, um, and it's in good shape too. So I, that's why I don't need this one. It's kind of excess. These were one of my favorite radios when I was young. When the export radio scene kind of came out, this chassis was one of my favorites. I had the 2527 base. I love that radio so much i was such a fool to get rid of it i wish i would have kept it because it didn't have the amp just was like this with all the added features of the rack mounted base it was such a nice radio for its day so let's try to take a quick listen to this if we can here i don't know bear bear with me on this one two one two might have to move the clarifier a little bit but one, two, one, two. Yeah, we're a little bit off. So hang on a second. I'll get that squared away. Okay, so we got squared away. It's getting better with time. See, that's the thing with these. They take time to warm up. So now we can listen to it. Check one, two, check one, two. It has a nice clear sound to it. You know, it's not all warbled and distorted. So I know it's squealing, and I'm sorry about that. But uh, my voice should sound nice and clear through this IC7300. Uh, so there's that. I like that Roger Beep. I always really like that. The 2527 didn't have that, and that was something I was disappointed. It had a different beep. You know, maybe I did align the sideband on this after all, because now it's sitting almost at 12 o'clock. One, two, one, two. Okay, here's our lower sideband modulation. One, two, three, one, two, three. Hello, radio, one, two. Nice and clean and clear. All right, now we're going to do AM really quick. Just take a quick listen to that. So, one, two, one, two, three. It has a nice clear sound on AM, too. It's not all distorted and uh, super, like, bassy and gargly and muffly. So, uh, this is with the NM532 mic, by the way. One, two, three, one, two. Check, check. Hello. All right. Might as well show FM, too. Now, these didn't have a deviation adjustment on them. 
so. But it does sound pretty good on FM. Now it's a little uh, less bodied modulation, but it's nice and clear, minus the squeal, of course. But one, two, one, two, check, check. All right, here's the receiver. So RF gains all the way up. Remember, it's got that busted one right there. I will include this plug with it. This is a four to six. This is AM. So we have one, three, five, seven. Well, let me see. One, three, five, seven, nine. That's how that works. And then the next one would be 10, 20, 30. That's my interpretation of how these always look. The dimmer works on this. That all works. Um, everything else seems to work. I haven't tried using the split or any of that program memories or any of that stuff. So they may or may not hold because I think the battery is dead in there. So, um, so this is S9. We're going to drop the signal level down and see where it kind of bottoms out at. Around 12. This is AM. It's about minus uh, 110, which that's pretty good. It's pretty good for an older rig. I'd say no one ever messed with the receive and didn't know what they were doing and turning stuff, so I'd say that's working fine. So there's our minus 110 with our attenuator there. Okay, here's our sideband. So this is also minus 67. Got one, three, five, seven, nine. Let's read nine properly. And you can tell that it's receiving on frequency because if I move the clarifier hear that pitch change on the signal generator and another way to tell is when you're looking at the cyanide meter you want to go full deflection and you can hear the sound change and when we go full deflection we're locked right in on the frequency that's being inputted in through the antenna socket so that's a good thing This is about 125. Yeah, 125. So not too bad either. So it's a good working little radio for for its time. Still works pretty good. So um, again, I made kind of a longer video than I probably should have, but I wanted to show everything. And uh, yeah, got the uh, Summer Camp TS 2000 DX. I'm gonna put a price on the website. I think it's a fair price. I'm going to give you guys the adapter, not the mic, but the adapter. It doesn't come with a mic um, because I don't have one. I would recommend running any kind of mic on these. I mean, these are pretty much open to just about anything. So my preference, you guys know, are always these. I don't have those wired for um, Ranger, but... Uh, you know, you can use the adapter that's coming with it with the 4-pin plug. I have plenty of these still, the 4-pin ones. Um, or any other mic of your choosing that you would like to use. I never was a big fan of the factory mic on these. I mean, they were the old coffin kind with the up and down. The cords, I don't know, they just weren't long enough and, and whatnot. But uh, to each his own on microphones, you can pretty much use anything. These aren't real picky about microphones, so as long as it's not too full of gain like probably like a silver eagle or something you're gonna want to keep that turned down quite a bit if you still have an older mic but uh they're pretty good on most microphones so no power cord no box no manual just a radio uh i have a bracket i will include a bracket how about that i don't have knobs though but i mean most of us in the radio hobby have plenty of knobs probably if you want to use a bracket you probably have knobs that will fit the radio anyways but i'll give you a bracket so you'll get a mounting bracket, you'll get the radio, and you'll get this um, 4 to 6 here. And that's it. So um, good luck to everybody. If somebody wants to buy it, it'll be on the website soon under pre-owned uh, used equipment section. And I'll try to post a link to the product right on this video. Um, probably longer, like I say, video than I wanted to show. But... I like to give the radio an opportunity to kind of show itself and not just two seconds. Here it is, key up and yell audio and and uh, just out the door kind of thing. So let's just check the frequency one more time since it's been sitting here and it's gotten nice and warm now. So these older ones, you got to be willing to be a little patient with them because they do require quite a bit more warm up time than the 
even the newer Rangers, they still do, but not as much. So, um, I wish they would go back Ranger to making lower power radios like this. I think these were really nice radios. Like I said in the beginning, these is my favorite chassis ever for Ranger. Yeah, so the AM still a little, you know, 100 and some hertz. It's gotten much better than what it did. So we can obviously move that. I don't think it's really necessary to spend the extra money if someone wants me to align it. If you buy it and you want me to align it, I will. But look where we're talking. I mean, you just move it like that. And like I showed, you can do it yourself with, with a different radio if you have something like SDR style radio. You can do it. Um, it doesn't require a lot of technical skill. Let's check the sideband one more time. All right, so this is lower side. We want 204 on the counter, so we're a little low, 100 hertz, but you see the counter is not centered, so let's center it. Yeah, so it's it's pretty much dialed in on sideband. I'm pretty sure I did align the sideband on this because I was using this from time to time, and I'm a stickler for that. So I can accept 10 hertz, 9, 10 hertz. That's not a big deal to me. And see where it's sitting right at 12, but it does take at least... I would say a radio like this, give it at least, a, now if you're in a winter climate and it's cold out in your vehicle and you want to run this in the car, I don't know. I don't know how long that's going to take, uh, but that's why you have the unlock clarifier. So you can tune to the people as soon as you start hearing them clearly, you're going to be right there where they are. That's the good reason for this. Otherwise, you can use the shift and try to use the, the hertz function too. But uh, in indoors, where it's like 68 degrees in here, it still took a good half an hour to warm up. And then one last look, here's our upper side. We're gonna look at about 206. We're about 30 hertz high, something like that, so we can adjust that now. Yeah, real minor changes here, not, not too big of a... Uh, the change actually went just a little bit too far. So yeah, that's more than acceptable right there. And we can see where we're sitting. So um, if you like it and you're interested and you like the classic radios, then probably this is a good one for you because I think these were rare for the United States. Although it is just a Ranger 2950 inside. So has the summer camp look. The only other one I've ever seen... Uh, I had a Mirage back when I was younger. It was a 2950EX. It said Mirage and it said 2950EX. That one was cool because it went down to, well, I thought it was cool for its time, but it went down to 24 megahertz. This one does not. 26 to 31 something, I think. This will probably go all the way to the nines. Yeah, the highest frequency is 3199999. And then actually 32. Yeah, 32 to 26. So that's what you get. Remember there's no um, channel button, so you have to you have to do it all yourself. You have to dial where you want to go. So remember that. Somebody can probably swap the battery for you if you ever wanted it. I'm not going to mess with it. I always used it like this. My 2950 is the same way. I don't need a channel number to pop up. 7-3, take care.